Welcome to our webinar today. My name is Jesse Walker. I'm a Global Programs Advisor with Rustic Pathways. I have been with Rustic for about 11 years now. I just passed the 11 year mark, formerly the director of our Tanzania programs, but I've traveled um, to quite a few and almost all of our countries. I've led programs in about 10 different countries for Rustic Pathways. Um, so I'm happy to answer any and all questions. I do have a colleague of mine behind the scenes today. If you do have any questions that come up during the presentation, there should be a little Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Go ahead and feel free to send your questions in there and he'll either answer it behind the scenes or we'll have some time at the end of the presentation for a Q&A. So just to kind of go over a quick uh, rundown of this webinar, like I said, I know it's a middle of the day presentation. I do appreciate you guys joining us if you're on your lunch breaks or a little break from work or what have you. Um, I will try to keep this concise and then have plenty of time for questions and answers. Um, during this webinar, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Rustic Pathways if you're brand new to our company. Um, we'll talk about our health and safety, um, our programs, spring break programs, young explorers programs, uh, scholarships, our chaperone flight deadline, which we have coming up in about a month here, how, and we'll go a, bit, how, a little bit about how to enroll, and then like I said, we'll have some time at the end of the presentation for questions and answers. So um, at Rustic Pathways, if you are totally brand new to us, we do see ourselves as the intersection between education, travel, and philanthropy. This is a really, really important time for students. Our programs are for um, ages 12 through 22, so middle school through college. This is a time of their lives where they're really deciding who they want to be, um, what they want to do, what they want to study when they go into um, college. And we find this is a perfect time to kind of get out in the world, explore their options, do some service work, interact with our local communities, and um, really take advantage of that opportunity for growth, um, learning empathy and confidence and independence and all those really great qualities that you take forward into um, adulthood. As a company, we've been around for about 37 years. We have about 100 different programs in about 20 different countries, so we have a lot of different variety of options for our programs, and we have a lot of different students, so something for everybody. Um, about 75% of those programs are service-based programs, and of, of the service programs, we have about five different types of service that we focus on, so that may be animal conservation, environmental conservation, um, infrastructure development, education, and so forth. So really, um, whatever a student is interested in, we try to offer an opportunity to explore that passion. And then we also have programs that are a little bit of a mix of everything, like our Introduction to Community Service, which again, since this is a, a webinar about first-time travelers, we have Intro to Community Service. The program is called in both uh, Costa Rica, Fiji, and Thailand really popular option for first-time travelers, specifically designed for students to get the opportunity to explore different types of service. They participate in six to eight different programs that run concurrently throughout the summer, um, or projects that they'll run um, during, their, during their program. And then this way, they have the opportunity to say, you know, I really thought I, I wanted to work with kids, but I loved getting my hands dirty, and I actually really loved like the development projects, or vice versa. Maybe they really thought they wanted to do animal conservation, but they actually like working with kids and the elderly. So nice way to kind of get their feet wet and try a little bit of everything before they make their uh, program choices for the future. Um, health and safety standards for first time travelers, first time families, this is always a really big concern for parents and rightfully so. Um, this is, you know, if you're sending your teen off abroad in the hands of someone other than yourselves and we understand that's a huge responsibility. Uh, we take that very seriously. We have a dedicated safety and risk management director. Um, who audits all of our programs. He works with all of our vendors. In fact, we have an entire team that works with all of our vendors. And by vendor, I mean this is someone who we outsource a particular activity. So it might be um, a shuttle driver or it might be a rafting company or bungee jumping, those kinds of things. We are um, the only company that we know of that has 100% um, uh, a process where 100% of our vendors um, work under our standards of safety. So that means that we do audit all of our vendors and this is an annual process that they have to pass a certain safety standard in order to work with us and run programs with our students. Uh, we also have uh, dedicated risk management policies in place for every single program and not only every program but every single day of the program. So our program leaders know how far away from a clinic or a hospital that they are. They'll know the um, risks that are in place for each, each particular day and the activities that they'll be, they'll be doing. Um, and we also partner with a company called ISOS, which is emergency evacuation uh, insurance. But in addition to that, it's also a huge network around the world of hospitals and doctors and clinics, and they're on call 
24 seven. So if there is, ever is an emergency situation, our leaders have access to this network. They can call, they can get immediate um, advice and information on what to do in the moment and where to take the student, how to contact that hospital, how far away it is, all of that kind of information. And you as parents will also have access to that database, which is a, a really incredible resource just to kind of give you some um, background knowledge and some information about where your student's going to be traveling. So, so if some questions coming in, I will have our um, Rustic Pathways. One of my colleagues, Connor Stowe, is behind the scenes, so they'll uh, be answering your questions, as I mentioned, if you're just joining us. Um, in addition to health and safety, in addition to the program protocols, our program leader training, they go through a training process online before they even get into country. They will also go in uh, in country training. So once they land in their destination country, in addition to training on the program. So there's kind of three different levels of training that they will go through to prepare for um, your program. We do have an entire team of full-time staff. We actually, as a company, run programs year round for school groups, um, in addition to our gap year programs that run during the school and our spring break and summer programs. So it's a full-time operation. All of our full-time staff have WOOFER certifications. So this is a wilderness first responder, which is essentially one step below an EMT, but with an emphasis on wilderness medicine. So they're pretty highly medically trained. They can handle most of what happens on our programs abroad. But again, if they don't, um, and a student needs to be taken to a clinic or a hospital, you will be contacted immediately or as soon as we can once we get the student safely there. Uh, feel free to send any other health and safety questions. I do wanna to touch base on our base house programs. These are excellent, excellent uh, first time traveler programs. So our base houses are properties that we own and operate around the world. They tend to offer a little bit more familiar amenities. So it's a great first time destination. Familiar amenities, by this I mean um, running water, electricity, um, seated toilets, that kind of thing. So they're not gonna be super rustic. As far as our programs go, we do have a huge range of programs, again, to kind of fit the different types of students that travel with us. Some of them are gonna be super rustic and off the beaten path. Others are gonna be a little bit more comfortable, great for like a first step um, and a place to kind of feel comfortable and not too far off the beaten path while you try to get your feet wet in, in global international travel. Um, here's a couple pictures of our base houses. Um, the one in the, the biggest one there with kind of the little um, cabins, that's our base house in Fiji. That's called the Echo Lodge. There's a, an infinity pool. It's not far from the ocean. Um, it's a beautiful place to kind of get your feet wet, um, so to speak, in two different ways. <laughs> um, down in the bottom left is our um, children's home, and then up in the top right is our uh, base house in Costa Rica, the Volcanoes Base House. So beautiful properties. They often have, they don't always have a pool, but they might have a pool. They often have a big space where students can play soccer. Um, they're usually going to have different um, buildings. Um, uh, for our programs, the accommodations, no matter if it's at a base house or a hotel, students are always separated by gender. Um, so that, that's something to keep in mind. But um, again, the base house programs are a great place to start. And I will show you towards the end of the presentation how you can find all of the base house programs in one place if you want to check out um, those first. So our spring break programs, we still have time on some of our spring breaks. I don't know if some of you may have, your spring break may have already passed. Some of you may be on spring break as we speak. So thank you for joining us on your break. And some of you may have it coming up. So we do still have a little bit of time. We have some programs that run into April. Um, to enroll in a program, you need at least eight days to uh, completely fill out your forms, do all your paperwork, and so that our teams can properly prepare for your students. So keep that in mind. If you are still considering a spring break program, you want to get on that right away so we can get in there. Um, in plenty of time, but we do have spring break programs all around the world, and I will go ahead and um, at the end of the presentation I'll also show you where you can find those for future reference. Our Young Explorers program. So if you're joining us with, um, today and you have a middle schooler, which is usually 12 to 13 years old, these programs are specifically designed for that set. They're going to be um, two-week programs that combine a little bit of everything. They're going to get um, traveling, they're going to get service, they're going to get cultural immersion, they're going to get adventure. So it's a really wonderful um, beginning for our students who are at that, at that age. Our leaders are specifically trained to work with that age group, and it's a really safe um, environment for them to kind of um, venture out on their own and start their international travel experience. Um, so check out our Young Explorers programs. And scholarships. So we do offer a number of scholarships throughout the year, and we do have a teacher appreciation program. Uh, I will also show you where you can find this information in a moment when we get to the website. 
But essentially, um, we also have a brand new scholarship that we're offering via one of our partners. It's called the Acceleration for a Scholarship. It just opened yesterday. We're super excited about it. It is covering 100% of the cost of the program and the flights. So it's definitely something you want to check out. The deadline to apply is April 15th. And then the, the uh, winners or the recipients will be awarded towards the end of the month. So um, something to look into for this coming summer. If you're looking for scholarships for the next year, our, our service scholarship will open again, I believe in October. It's usually about mid fall. And we have two different rounds for the service scholarship. So um, the first round will be about mid October in, until the end of November. And the second round will be December through March. And it just closed for this year um, on the 20th. So something to look into. Do. If you are a teacher, or even if you aren't a teacher, but you work somehow in the education industry, maybe you're an administrator, you work at the school somehow, we appreciate you. We love our uh, teacher and um, education uh, professionals. So if you are, if you do work in that field, we also offer a special discount that's good any time of the year, and I can show you where you find that information. Something to be aware of is our flight deadline, and that comes up April 15th, and what that is is we have blocks of seats reserved on every single flight that we offer for US-based students. If you're coming from the US, you will be flying. It is mandatory and it's required that you fly with our chaperone on a group flight. And we have several different hub airports depending on your destination. You'll join us at a hub airport. Um, you'll find our, you'll meet our staff there. We have airport coordinators there. In addition to the chaperones that will take all the students, get them checked in, travel with them through security on the flight down there until they meet their staff in country. It's a really wonderful, safe process, keeps all our students together, and we are also in control of that ticket. So if anything happens, if they happen to be rerouted or it's delayed, we can make sure that we get all those students, um, again, with our chaperones on the very next flight out. So it's a really great process that way. Because of this, we definitely want to get all of our students, if possible, enrolled before April 15th. As of April 15th, the airlines that we work with begin asking us to release those reserved seats, which we've had reserved sometimes as early as September the year prior. And they allow us to do that up to a certain point towards the summer. And then if we're not going to utilize those tickets, we have to release them. So after that, you can still enroll. But now it's a case by case basis. We have to look at the flights. Um, depending on your departure date, the airline, and whether we still have those reserved seats. And if we don't have the reserved seats, we have to go back to the airline to see if there's still seats. And so, uh, long story short, if you get in before April 15th, you are guaranteed to have a seat on our flight, and it will be the cost that you see on our website. Nothing will change, and you'll kind of have all that information up front, um, rather than trying to wait and having to wait until we figure out with the airlines if they still have a spot for you on that group flight. So something to be aware of if you are still looking into programs, um, try and get in before the 15th of April. This is a big one. So take a screenshot here if you can. Um, save 10% since you've joined us today. You've listened to my rambling. I really appreciate it. We really appreciate you joining us live and getting all your questions answered. And for that, we'd love to reward you with a 10% off discount. It's RP5Web. It's uh, good for the next 72 hours. Um, so usually, usually through Sunday of this weekend, it will expire and it will no longer be good on the application. So that's something um, that you can take advantage of if you enroll here in the next couple of days. If you didn't feel like you got all your questions answered today, like I said, I'll have a little time at the end of this presentation for questions and answers, but you can also always give us a call. I've got an awesome team of colleagues that all have about 10 years of experience or more, and we're here just waiting to answer all your questions. So feel free to give us a call and we can go through anything that you want. Okay, I'm gonna hop over right now to the website and just show you some of that information, some of those resources that we have for families. Bigger. So here is our main website. If you click this menu in the top right corner, it's going to drop down into a, a big menu. I'm sure you've seen this before. You can search programs by country. This How It Works column is super helpful. Um, the program types page I'll show you here in a minute is how you can uh, find all of our spring break programs, young explorers, or search by interest. The flights and travel page is really important to kind of look into information about all of our hub airports, airlines, how we arrange travel. If your student is an unaccompanied minor, that kind of information you can find there and our scholarships programs here. Um, so these are all really useful links. While I have you on this um, website, I do want to point out over here the student impact and global community impact as you are as a family if you're looking into 
to these programs and you're kind of asking yourself like what is the benefit of travel besides just having a fun summer adventure we um, we hear you and this is a really um, we find this just an, such an awesome opportunity for students and we have started to research and track the impact that these programs have both on our students and on our global communities so it's a two-way street we want to make sure that our students are growing and they're learning empathy and independence and confidence and things like that but we also want to make sure that our, our communities are happy with our students being there and they're part of this process and they're also the ones who decide which projects are best for the um for the community so something two two links that i find really helpful also we have our health and safety page so a lot of really great information just going to pop over here to the program types page wanted to show you that on screen really quick here's where you can find base house programs also first-time travelers we have a link here for programs that are not only our base house programs but maybe some other programs that um, are a little bit more introductory great places for first-time travelers to start um, future educators are going to be students in interested in working with kids or adults in some sort of education fashion all of these if you're interested in the medical field we have medical certification program so a great way to narrow those options since we have so many programs I always like to kind of start people here start families here um, so they're not quite as overwhelmed with all the options and then again over here we've got um, cell phone free sessions which we really highly encourage students to totally disconnect while they're traveling you're gonna get the most out of your experience and fully be present if you can do that and then we have our spring break young explorers photography program so that's a great place to start off and then when you're ready to enroll, there's an enroll now button up in the top of the screen. I do, I'm gonna show you one more thing on the menu. If you click here, there's a giant yellow box here in the bottom right corner, the contact us page. That's how you can not only get the information about how to contact us, but if you would like us to call you at a convenient time for you, you can click here to schedule a call. Um, you can access the, the Global Program Advisors, my team's calendars, and you can choose a time that's convenient for you. We'll give you a call so you don't have to kind of um, try and squeeze it in. And then when you are ready to enroll, once you've got all your questions answered, click in the top right corner, you're gonna find this basic page. It's gonna take you to the application. Pretty simple and straightforward. It's maybe about six pages. There's one page for the student information, one page for parent information, choose your itinerary, choose your payment method. Um, if you have any questions about the process, give us a call, but that is how you enroll. And there's even a page on our website, if we go back here, if you want more information about our cancellation policies or payment options underneath the how it works section this how to enroll page can be really useful there's some uh, there's a video and there's some uh, information for you there hopefully that was um, very helpful for you hopefully we answered your questions I'm gonna go now to our question and answer section and see what we've got feel free to send them in now we've got some time for you guys So I do have a question about the likely minimum amount of kids that are on a flight leaving a hub. So um, it's hard to say. I would say a lot of our programs, it depends on the departure country. So if you're traveling to Thailand or Costa Rica where we have 14, 16 different programs, um, the students are actually, all students traveling to a destination are gonna to travel together no matter what their program is. The same date, they'll be traveling on the same flight. So in some cases, like with Costa Rica and Thailand, we might have <clears throat> at some point 100 different seats um, reserved on that flight and um, anywhere, you know, up to about 100 students or so traveling at a time. Um, it can even go slightly over that. Um, it go down to like if you're traveling to a smaller country that only has a couple programs, maybe you're traveling to um, Cuba or China, there may be uh, 12 students or so traveling on that particular date. So it depends on the country and how many programs we have running that particular date, but the larger countries are gonna have a, a quite a large group of students and several different chaperones to make sure that they're all safe and, and sound and know where they're going. Um, can you use a credit card to make payments? Great question. So you could use a credit card for the enrollment fee, which right now for new students is $200, and for any of the insurances. So um, there's the ISOS insurance, which I mentioned, which is mandatory, and then we have a couple optional, which is like a trip, um, uh, trip travel health insurance, and then and the trip cancellation waiver, which is cancellation insurance. Those are optional. You can use a credit card for any of those um, payments what you cannot use a credit card for is the cost of the program and cost of the flight and there is a reason behind this we know it's kind of a pain um, we have tried this in the past i'm happy to kind of answer that over the phone but there's um 
uh, it's a little bit difficult with the credit card companies to, to accept credit card payments at this time. It's something that we're always trying to work and bring back. But otherwise, the payment options are ACH bank transfer, which is essentially a direct withdrawal, or personal check. Um, if you are coming from us or joining us from international destination, um, any country outside the United States, you can also use a wire transfer. A couple different options for payment. And let's see if there's any other last minute questions. Um, vaccines, there is some information on our website for that. You'll also be sent information if the vaccines are required for your destination. One thing to know is when you enroll with us, it takes a couple days to process your application, after which you receive your welcome letter, and that's going to come via email. It will have a ton of information to get you started, including the information for your personal travel advisor, and your, your PTA is what we call them. And this is going to be your new best friend. They're a wonderful team of people specifically there to help you through this process. They're going to help you with your forms and flights and any other questions that arise during this time. You'll have someone, kind of a point person, and you'll have their direct email, the direct phone number. You don't have to call and go through all the prompts of the main line and get somebody different each time. So that's something to keep in mind that you'll have um, a resource on your side once you're enrolled, and they'll come and help you through that whole process. Um, quick question Sen says, can I get in contact with chaperones on specific programs? Um, this is not something that we can usually coordinate because our leaders, like I said, are going to be already in country uh, before they travel, before students travel, going through training. They're going to be in um, in country training and on program training. This may mean they're off the grid, so they're not next to a computer. And oftentimes, if your student is traveling in July, they will be have they will have been running programs from June through August. Um, so it's a little bit difficult to get. Um, you in contact with specific chaperones. That being said, we're happy to connect you. First of all, you'll have your PTA that will know your program really well. We're happy to connect you with someone on our country team. If you'd like to speak with somebody on the Thailand team, for example, we can do that. If there's a specific medical question, we also have a medical screener who can go through all of that because we have a lot of different resources and people that you can communicate with. Um, but the exact program leaders can be a little bit more of a challenge because they're usually in either in training or working with students. We don't want to pull them away from that. Um, from their responsibilities. Um, but certainly reach out to your PT at any time, and if you have any specific questions, we can help get you to the right answer. Um, how safe are the places traveling that the students will be staying if it's not a base house program? So safety is obviously a top priority for our company. We will not send students in a place that we cannot properly assess the risk. There is obviously inherent risk in travel abroad, and we understand that this is why we have an incredible team put in place to um, constantly keep an ear to the ground. Our um, safety team actually monitors three different um, organizations. In addition to ISOS, they monitor um, the US government, the UK government, the Australia government warnings, just to make sure that if anything comes up on those, there's a blip on the radar, um, we are on top of it. In addition to that, because we have a full-time presence in a lot of these countries, so we have programs year-round in most of the countries which we operate, and a full-time team of staff and country directors, directors that are in contact with the local embassies. Um, the State Department knows they're aware of our students that are traveling there, so we have many different levels of um, processes in place to make sure that we know what's going on. And there, there have been situations in the past as a company, um, such as the um, Arab Spring. We did cancel our programs in Morocco. Morocco at the time was not uh, necessarily a high risk area and nothing actually ended up happening over the summer, but it was a place where we couldn't properly assess the risk. We didn't know how quickly it would rise and how quickly it would spread. So in, in the interest of safety, we did cancel our programs for that year. Um, we've had similar situations in Thailand where we've had to close entire program, entire series of programs in Thailand for a summer and, and replace the, those programs elsewhere. So it is something that we have had to do as a company before, but the good thing is we are able to usually know, <clears throat> excuse me, well ahead of time if that's going to be the case. And if we do end up closing a program, we'll contact parents immediately. We'll try to move you on to another program that fits the, the student's interests and dates. And if not, we'll issue a refund. So um, that is something that unfortunately we had to do a few times in our past, but it is something that we um, can do and will do if we find necessary. A uh, question about cell phones. This is also, like I mentioned, a very popular topic. Um, 
some families want to get rid of cell phones completely and others want to keep, hang on to that cell phone to have contact with their students. Um, this is going to be a little bit dependent on the program. There are, for all of our programs, there are activities where we do not allow cell phones. So they're not going to be allowed to have their cell phone during group activities, meals, uh, service projects, those kinds of things. Most of the time during the day, we want students to be off their phones. There will be times where they may be able to use them for music or to use them as a camera. But if they're really into photography, I always recommend bringing along a, a camera because there may be some times when they're in a rural village, um, the local community does not like to have their, their um, picture taken on cell phones. So we're not going to allow the students to have their cell phones. So um, just keep in mind that there will be times they will not be allowed to have their cell phones. We do have cell phone free sessions, which means they will not have access to their phones at all, except when they arrive and depart. Um, keep in mind as parents that we have a 24 hour emergency hotline, so you can contact us at any time if you need to. We can put you in touch with our team in country. In addition to that, we will send you emails when the students land, make sure that you know that they're safe with their luggage. We'll also send updates about the trip so you will know that your student's doing well. Other, other than that, we really typically say no news is good news. It means your student is with their friends, they're not trying to like contact home, they're not homesick, they're having a good time. Then after that, it depends on the program. So there are a few of our programs where the students will have access to Wi-Fi a couple times during the trip. This really greatly depends on the program. We do not offer Wi-Fi at our base houses. As a company, as I mentioned, we are trying to help students be disconnected so that they can really connect into their destination country and be there with their friends and not be on their phones and their devices and social media. So if you as parents can help us in that, help encourage their student to disconnect, that's always something that we're, we're working towards. But um, yes, if they're not on a cell phone free session, essentially most students will have the chance to send a message home in the evening if, if um, you want. And then a quick question about accommodation. So the accommodation, let me show, just show you on the website. If you go into any particular program page, let's just go to Costa Rica, for example. Computer is slightly slow. If you go to Costa Rica, I'm just gonna open up Intro to Community Service since I mentioned that one. That program, this is one of our base house programs, and you'll see the tags over here, the type of program that it is. Um, you can actually, actually click these links too if you wanted to click into those categories. If you scroll past the basic introduction, all of the available sessions, which you'll notice here, um, they will either say available, limited, which means fewer than half of the spaces are available, and then once it gets to about four or five spots left, it actually starts a red countdown, so you'll be able to see exactly how many spots are left. You can also save your spot for 72 hours, though I think if you're ready to enroll at this time of year, I would just say enroll because that save your spot, we found some people lose the email or they forget how long it takes um, or forget how long they have for that 72 hours. And if your spot goes immediately back to the website, someone might snatch it up. So I would just go ahead and click the enroll button when you're ready to enroll. And then down here, um, some of the programs you're going to find an overview, which gives you information about the base house and the different projects. It does depend a little bit on the program, but you'll also find the complete day-to-day -day itinerary, packing information, and the FAQs. And the FAQs is super helpful. It's going to have a bunch of information, and the very first question is about the accommodations, where you can learn about where they're going to be staying. So some programs, we have programs that offer camping, homestays, stays in guest houses and hotels, um, any variety base houses. So there's quite a few different types of accommodation. And some programs offer accommodation there. So they're gonna camp for two nights and maybe they'll stay at a hotel for three nights. So all of that will be listed in the accommodation information under the FAQs. Depends quite a bit on the program. Also just to point out another way you can find flight information um, is right here next to the cost of any program. It'll say plus airfare and that's a clickable link and that'll take you to the country's airfare page. I don't see any other questions coming in. I do appreciate everybody joining us tonight. I'll wait one more second, but if anything else comes up, feel free again to give us a call or request to call back and we'll be happy to, to do that. I look forward to speaking to you guys and thanks for your time this afternoon. Bye. <laughs>